So last winter I was uh, scrolling social media as one does and I was looking at this drawing of mine which was fairly popular at the time and then I had an idea. Hiccup and Toothless are already really popular but what if I did like a series of paintings based on Astrid and Stormfly which are less popular but um, I really like them, they're cool. So I sat down on my computer, opened up Krita and I decided to draft three drawings the first one would just be a simple portrait piece, uh, just kind of hinting at a relationship. And then the next one would be um, a piece kind of showing them playing fetch, because that was a really funny thing in the second movie. And then the last one is kind of going to be a mimicry of um, the scene when Hiccup and Toothless first bond, but it's not quite on Stormfly's forehead, just like, you know, a gentle chin hold. So today's video is actually going to focus on that second one. I'm going to show you how I turned this into this final painting. Let's get started. This painting starts with our good friend Blender, which is a free and open source 3D modeling and animation software. I used it here to create a base and then I painted over that base for the final piece. So here is the original file. Uh, you can see I have an icosphere that I sculpted at the bottom for the kind of cliff rock face that Astrid is standing on. And then I have a humanoid model and her axe. Uh, I modeled the axe myself based on reference images, and the human model is a free-to-use model I found and rigged for this painting. So this is basically the setup. Um, the rig isn't great because I'm not good at 3D stuff. And then here is what it looks like when it is rendered. So the rock material is from a YouTube tutorial I will link in the description. The main thing I want to focus on here though is how I used lights. So I have this strong overhead light that's basically representing the sun. I have one in the bottom right that's kind of blue to show the sky and water reflecting off that cliff face. And to the left I have a light green light which is going to be because I'm going to put grass on top of this cliff and it's going to reflect on the skin and the axe in this way. So this will help me later when I'm painting to just figure out how it's going to reflect off of all these edges. For the human model, I just use a basic subsurface scattering material because I like to exaggerate um, light on human skin. And for the axe, it's very simple. The metallic parts are just shiny and metallic. The rest are very flat texture. And here is what it looks like from the camera. This is the angle I will be painting from. So let's look at that. To start this painting, I just took the thumbnail that I originally created, loaded it into a new, much larger document, and then I pasted the Blender render on top, as you can see. Then after that, it's just loading in the reference images and doing some base colors. So the first thing I'm doing here is just filling in the sky with what I vaguely want it to be. Then, after I had the environment background basically done, which helps with lighting, I decided to fill in the human model. And the way I did this is I selected parts of the body, and I used multiply, overlay, color, etc. blending mode layers to recolor them to be different textures. So I'm going to give her a red shirt, she's going to have these dark blue pants, uh, stuff like that. This obviously isn't fully accurate because they are all having this very strong subsurface scattering material, um, but I am going to paint over it anyway, so it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be an approximation. Next, I decided to tackle just drawing the grass on top of this cliff because I wanted that done early on. Um, what I like to do is to start with how I think the color would look like in shadow. So I'm painting this all a dark green, and then afterwards I'm going to create a clipping layer and do the light green parts where I think the light will hit around the shadow that both Stormfly and Astrid are casting from the sun.
So now I'm going to try and tackle painting a stormfly. Uh, I couldn't find any sort of model, so I'm just gonna be throwing in a reference image and using that as a base idea of what she looks like. Um, as I did with the grass earlier, I'm gonna be starting with a dark silhouette and I'm going to end up painting on the light parts later. Most of this is on one layer, but I decided to throw the tail on a layer behind it just because that would make it easier to paint stuff later. As you can see, I'm just filling in the base colors and I'm going to go on top of that with a color dodge layer to paint where I think the light should uh, land on her form. After that, I'm pretty satisfied with Stormfly just as a basic silhouette and we're going to go ahead and tackle putting a bit more details on Astrid, um, actually filling out her hair and some of the other articles of clothing that I just didn't get to earlier when I was trying to lay out the base colors. After blocking out those, I'm going to tackle the hard part, which is the face. <laughs> this was not fun. I redrew this thing like a dozen times over the course of this painting. Right now you're just seeing the first iteration of me taking a painterly brush and painting over the blender model and how um, that was rendered. I will definitely change it more over the course of this painting. For the clouds here, I kind of just took a rough brush and scribbled a single like light gray color in. I'm going to go and make that as more detailed later with some other brushes that I'll show off. Uh, these branches were kind of a spur of the moment decision after I had the clouds. I was looking at this painting and I was like, okay, I don't think there's enough depth here, so I'm going to stick something in the foreground and just blur it out later to make it feel more immersive. After that, I went back to Stonefly. I'm going to actually render out some of the stuff that's going on here rather than just leaving it as color blocking. Uh, I apologize for all the zooming in and out. I'm constantly going back and checking the reference because I obviously do not have this entire dragon memorized. As I said before, you're going to see me come back to this face a lot. I was really struggling with it for the course of this painting. Uh, what I ended up doing in the end was I smoothed out the facial features to try and round out her face because she's an animated character with a very round face and I was trying to portray that in a more realistic style, which is just tough, but um, by smoothing out where the light was hitting stuff, I was able to do that. And I also ended up uh, enlarging the eyes and eyelashes later on, which fits more with her cartoon vibe and also when you're zoomed out looking at the image as a whole, you can actually see the eyes and see the expression. Um, but that took a lot of iterations to get to. This scene really quickly, but I do want to focus on how I implemented some balance or rim light here. Um, I'm just taking a light blue because that's the color of the sky all around her and I'm going to be painting that 
in areas where um, there is a form shadow. So like the back end of the face, there's a bit of blue there under the chin. I'm also going to put some of that light blue on the back of her legs. Um, stuff like that is very important to round out your forms. Uh, this is a fun part here. So what I'm doing is I'm using a, a set of cloud brushes from the Fizzy Flowers Essential Brush Set, which you can find on the Krita Artist's form. And I'm using that to get some more detailed shapes in these clouds. And then I'm going on top of this with a brighter color to kind of represent where the sun is in the clouds. And I'm going to um, take some of my favorite pa painterly brushes, like the oil brushes I have, and paint on top of these basic forms. As you can see, I'm doing that right now. Um, it just helps to use some cloud brushes to get a basic idea, but then it's fun to clean it up and make it fit with your style using your favorite brushes. And speaking of favorite brushes, that's all I'm doing with the Rocky Cliff too. I mean, I already had a texture in Blender and I rendered it and I'm just going on top of it with some um, textured brushes to make it fit with the rest of the painting. I'm also using some brushes from that same brush set by Fizzy Flower to um, add some detail to the grass. So that brush set has a lot of really good landscape brushes. I'm basically in love with all the foliage and grass brushes. I use them for almost all my landscapes as a base. And then I obviously paint some of my stuff by hand on top, but um, it's very good for getting some basic foliage down and it adds a lot of diversity to your plants. Here I realized that the image is feeling kind of flat, so I ended up adding a small gradient between the foreground branches and the midground where Aston and Stormblight are, and then I decided to add some rocky sea cliffs out in the background and just blur those out to be light blue so they look like they're far in the distance. Um, I think this makes the image look a lot more three-dimensional and immersive. I don't know. So I'd been avoiding it for a while, but eventually I got to the part where I kind of needed to paint in the entire dragon, filling it most of the image. So here I am, I hid all of the other resources to the side so I could just focus on the canvas where I have Stormfly and the reference image right over there. Um, I'm just going to go in and do some basic rendering first and um, make sure I have like the spikes and the basic forms down and the basic colors. Um, but I have a fun technique where I paint the scales later that I will tell you guys how I do.
I don't really have a lot of tips about dragon anatomy. I'm kind of just filling this in from the reference I have and hoping it looks good. Um, but something that I think tends to look good <laughs> and that I enjoy is putting holes in the wings. So um, if you're looking for some tips, I put, put holes in your dragon's wings, I guess, near the bottom. I think it looks cool. So around this time, I realized I needed to figure out how to do the scales. Um, I didn't want to just go on top with a like color dodge or overlay layer and do some scale shapes because I didn't think that would look good. So I decided on a method. Basically, I was going to duplicate the layer and use a curves filter, which um, OBS didn't record, to make everything a lot darker. And then um, I made a transparency mask on top of that, and I just painted in the scales where I wanted them to be. Um, so I think this was a pretty good method of doing it um, because using a transparency mask gave me a lot of freedom to adjust it losslessly without like completely messing stuff up um, or without using like a dozen different layers. Um, basically, I'm just painting in the scales by hand because I think using some sort of texture is not going to look very good. And um, later on, I'm going to grab an airbrush and do a bit more finagling with it to make it have um, shadow and form more than just these flat circles I'm doing. But um, yeah, I recommend this method. You know, just use a curves filter on your base and um, it's good because you can adjust the color relative to every part of the thing you already painted rather than trying to use like a multiply layer and it's just... It's a bit harder to control. And now that I think I'm basically done rendering this out, um, one of the kind of post-processing things I like to do nowadays is I take a small light colored um, brush and I'll do small edges around um, the forms of whatever creature or object I'm painting. And this just kind of makes it look a bit more round. It's a bit of rim light. Um, I don't know, I think it looks better than just a harsh cutoff into the abyss of whatever is in the background.
So after a bit more rendering and adding rim light and stuff, I realized it felt a little bit empty still, despite adding other details like the sea stacks in the background. So here we go, just some dragons in the background. Um, they're not the focus of the image, but I think adding stuff like this does help make it feel more immersive. So as we reach the end of this, I'm kind of just doing some basic style touches. Um, I like to nowadays mix up the colors a bit by taking some highly saturated brush strokes and then erasing them so there's just like glimpses of something that was there, almost as if this was painted on top of some canvas that had another artwork there before and I don't know, I think it adds interest. Um, I'm also, again, adding more rim light. Um, and I like to add particles to a lot of my paintings, so just kind of like dust or small debris in the wind that the light might hit. Um, usually blurred because it's not the focus, I don't want you to look at it super hard, but I think it, again, makes it feel more immersive, just like a snapshot of a longer series of moments. I'm also taking an airbrush and doing a bloom effect on some areas of bright light, like on top of Astrid's head I wanted to have the light really reflect on her hair. And then last minute, after I basically was calling this done, um, I realized it felt a little odd to not have the saddle on Stormfly. Um, I know this is a bit weird out of context, it's just a girl with an axe possibly throwing it, so I hope that making the saddle apparent would make it more clear that, oh, this is just a game of fetch or something silly they're just playing, because it's clearly a tamed dragon. <laughs> 